Welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today I am making four pot in pot instant pot recipes. Now if you don't know what that is, you'll want to stick around. Now if you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Kristen and every Monday I share an instant pot recipe with you. But today I'm going to share four with you and these are called pot in pot recipes. Now pot in pot cooking is so fun because anything that you cook in your oven, you can pretty much cook in your instant pot if you have another pot. Now I'm gonna be using my spring form pan and my double stack Ecovana pans in these recipes. You can also use like a normal glass bowl if you're gonna cook a little bit of rice or anything like that. Now pot and pot cooking can be a little intimidating, but if you watch closely, you'll see how easy it is. Now these recipes that I'm sharing are my most favorite pot in pot recipes. So if you guys are ready, let's get cooking. Now the first Instant Pot recipe I'm making is Instant Pot Lasagna. This is a vegetable lasagna. It's super easy to make and it tastes amazing. All right, we're just gonna start with our spring form pan. Like I said before, this is the three inch by the six inch. So you can get it a little bit bigger, the seven inch, but I'm using the six inch today. All right, we're gonna start with one egg. Then I'm gonna add one cup of ricotta cheese. Then when you're done adding the ricotta, you're gonna add your spices. So I have a half teaspoon of each one of these. We have salt, pepper, oregano, garlic powder, and Italian seasoning. Then you're just gonna dump those all in. Next, we're gonna add one cup of mozzarella cheese. Then you're gonna mix everything until it's well combined. All right, when it's all mixed together, you're gonna set that aside and pull out your springform pan. Now I am using oven-ready lasagna noodles, so I don't have to boil them, it makes it a lot easier. So I'm gonna kinda measure and then break them so they'll fit right into my pan. Now, the noodles do not have to be pretty. What you're trying to do is just cover up the bottom of the springform pan the best you can. So if you notice, I am using little pieces and it's okay because it will cook together. All right, so I'm just adding a few more noodles on and now I am ready to put half of my cheesy ricotta mixture in there. Then you're just gonna spread it around the best you can. Now I'm just gonna take a handful of spinach leaves and just kind of tear them up and put them right on top of the cheese. Again, it's lasagna, so it doesn't have to be pretty. Next, I have a 24 ounce jar of just traditional spaghetti sauce. You can use whatever sauce you like in your lasagna. Then just spread the sauce around right over the spinach. Now you're just gonna repeat your layers. So you're gonna add your noodles again and like I said before, they don't have to be perfect because they will all cook together. Next, you're gonna add the rest of the cheese mixture right on top of the noodles. Then just spread it all around. Now we're ready for the spinach again. So I just grabbed another little handful and I'm just ripping it up into pieces so it will lay as flat as I can get it. And again, you're gonna add a half of a cup of your spaghetti sauce or whatever sauce you love on top of your spinach leaves and just spread it around again. <laughs> now this is the last layer of noodles. So again, I'm gonna try and measure them so they'll fit perfectly into my little pan. Again, you're gonna add another half cup or so of your sauce, spread it around, and now for my most favorite part, the cheese. So I added about a half a cup to a cup. I like a lot of cheese, so I added about a cup. Now once you're done with that, you're gonna take a piece of foil and put it right on top of your spring form pan. Now my Instant Pot came with a steam rack, and so that's what I'm gonna use today to cook my lasagna. I know there are a lot of other things you can use for your Instant Pot, but this came with mine, so we're just gonna make it easy. All right, so now I'm just adding one cup of water because you need water for it to pressurize. Then I'm gonna put my pan right on top. Then you're gonna put your lid on, close it, and make sure that your thing is turned to sealing, not venting, you want it on sealing. Then on your Instant Pot, you're gonna push manual and go up to 24 minutes. Then when it's done, you're gonna let it release on its own, so you're not gonna put it on venting 
for 15 minutes. So now I'm preheating my oven to 450 degrees. Take the foil off of your lasagna, put it in, and watch it for about two to three minutes until it's nice and golden brown on top. Then you can pull it out. I would let it sit for a few minutes before eating it so it will stay together a little bit better. So recipe number two is my chocolate poke cake. Now when you're making cake in the Instant Pot, I can promise you, you won't have dry cake on your hands ever. So this chocolate poke cake, you can put all kinds of stuff on it. I decided to chop up some Snickers. Now I'm gonna be using the spring form pan for this one. All right, so I'm gonna take a normal box chocolate cake and just dump it in a bowl. You're gonna follow the directions on the back of your cake mix. So this one has one and a fourth cup water, three eggs, and a half cup of oil. Now if your directions don't match mine on your cake mix, it will be just fine. Just follow the directions on your cake mix. Now you're gonna go ahead and spray your spring form pan with some cooking spray so your cake won't stick. Then pour your batter right into it. Now you wanna leave about a half an inch at the top because it will bake up a little bit. Next, cover your cake with foil. Now this is an important part because you don't want a soggy cake. So I'm gonna do two layers of foil. Now as you put on your foil, make sure you seal it up the best that you can. Now it's not gonna be perfect, but that's okay. So now I have my Instant Pot, I'm gonna add my trivet to the bottom of it and add about a cup of water. Then go ahead and put your pan right inside. Gonna close your lid, make sure the knob is on sealing, always. And now you can do pressure cook, or if you have a manual button, it's the same thing. And you're gonna go all the way up to 45 minutes. About seven seconds after you push that, your machine's gonna say on. That's a good thing, it's gonna start pressurizing and then we'll start counting down. All right, so I let it sit in there for about four minutes and then I did the knob to venting to let it do a quick release. Once all the pressure's out, you can go ahead and take the lid off of your Instant Pot and your cake should be all the way done. I'm gonna take my new favorite clamp and pull it right out of the Instant Pot. So go ahead and take the foil off of your cake very carefully, it's gonna be a little bit hot but you're gonna want your cake hot for this next part. Now it's okay if your foil sticks to the top a little bit. You could spray it with Pam so it won't stick, but this is the bottom of our cake, so it really doesn't matter that much. All right, so now I'm poking holes in my cake. Now this cake is really thick. I should have done a knife and gone all the way to the bottom, but because I'm using a fork, we're just doing the top today. Now for my favorite part, we are adding a half cup of caramel on top of the cake. Now this is just the caramel that you can find like by the ice cream or the chocolate syrup area. It's that kind of caramel or caramel, whatever you call it. Don't be mad at me. <laughs> now you want to do a generous amount. So I did about a half a cup. You can do more. If you think that's too much, go ahead and do less. But you want to do this while it's hot so the caramel will seep down into the cake. Now you can eat it right now with some ice cream. It would be delicious, but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So I put this in the fridge overnight. I covered it back up, and now I'm just going around the edges so it will pull out pretty quick. Putting a plate on the bottom, flipping it over, and then popping open my springform pan. Now because I sprayed it with non-stick cooking spray, the springform pan comes off so easily, and so does the top, well, the bottom. All right, I like to add toppings on top of my cake. So this is a Snickers bar. You could use Milky Ways, Twix, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, whatever topping you want. Next, I'm just gonna put it on top Cool Whip. I know there's Cool Whip haters out there. That's fine, you can use real whipping cream or a frosting even if you want to. So I just put some Cool Whip all over the top, then kind of clean up the edges a little bit, add a little bit more caramel just for a cute drizzle. There's not a lot of flavor with that, but it looks good. Then I'm just gonna add the Snickers that I cut up right on top. So I'm gonna call this my Snickers Poke Cake. Now cooking cake in the Instant Pot makes it so moist and delicious. You're gonna die when you try this, especially when you put the caramel in it, you can see how the caramel's gone down into each bite. Recipe number three, I am making meatloaf and potatoes at the same time. I like to use ground turkey for this recipe, but you can use ground beef. My grandma would use ground beef. All right, we're gonna add one fourth cup of ketchup. I'm just kind of guessing there. I like to add garlic salt. You can add normal salt and then also some pepper. This is just to give it a little bit of flavoring. Next on top, I'm gonna add two eggs right into the bowl. Now the recipe that I am using is my grandma's. She 
calls for a whole onion. I didn't love that much onion, so I'm gonna cut it down to a half an onion next time. And then you're gonna add one cup of oats, old-fashioned oats. Then on top of that, you're gonna add one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce or Worcestershire or however your family says it. It's that sauce, one tablespoon. And then the last ingredient is tomato soup. So I'm only gonna add about half the can of tomato soup here. Now, my grandma used her special trick here, and it's she used her hand to mix everything together. If you use beaters of some sort, it will mix it a little too much together, so using your hand is the perfect way to get the perfect texture. All right, now that everything's ready, we're gonna put stuff into the pot. So my potatoes are going on the very bottom of my pot, and I have about, ooh, 10 small ones, or you can do six or seven large ones. So I have two different kinds, just because I had different potatoes in my house, just using the rest of them. Then I'm gonna put my little rack right over top. If you don't have a rack, that's okay. You could put it, your pan right on top of the potatoes, but the rack seems to help it a little more. So these are the Ecovana pans that I use. I'll put a link in the description. They are amazing, I use them all the time. Now you wanna make sure that it's just below the fill line so your lid will actually go on. So now that I all my meat mixture is ready, I'm gonna pour it right in to my Ecovana pan. Now if I would film this again, I would add my meatloaf on the outside of the pot just in case it did fall down the sides. I don't want it touching my potatoes. But thankfully it didn't fall apart and it stayed all into that pan. So now I'm just spreading it out even so it will cook evenly. All right, now that that's ready to go, I'm gonna take the rest of my tomato soup and I used way too much. I should have done half of it, but that's okay. I'm gonna add a little ketchup to make up for my tomato sauce. Then you're gonna do another tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and then one tablespoon of brown sugar. Now the recipe calls for two tablespoons, but I just like one tablespoon. I don't like it as sweet. So now you're just gonna mix this up really, really good and you're going to pour it right on top of your meatloaf. And go ahead and spread it around just as evenly as you possibly can get it. Now you don't wanna skip this step because the sauce on top makes it taste so good. So now it is time to cook the meatloaf. So I'm gonna put my lid, the Ecovana lid on first, and then I'm going to put my Instant Pot lid on. So after you put it on, make sure it's sealed tight. You want the knob turned to sealing, not venting, and I'm gonna cook it on manual. Now in the Ecovana, Ecovana pot, you can do it for 25 minutes. If you're doing a loaf pan or something bigger so it's thicker, you want 30 minutes. All right, when it's done, so the L will appear, meaning it's going to start counting up. Um, I did a quick release, that means I turned my knob quickly so I could get all the pressure out, and I'm gonna take my lid right off. Now, I wish you could be here to smell this because it smells so good. So I always do the check. I'm checking in the middle of my meatloaf, make sure it's all cooked through. If it's not, go ahead and put it back into your Instant Pot and do it for as many minutes as you think. It could be two minutes, it could be 10 minutes. It really depends on how thick your meatloaf is and even what kind of meat you have. So my potatoes on the bottom, don't forget about those, those are done now too. So I took my metal rack out. I'm just gonna drain the water out so I can put the liquid in I want to add. So I'm adding three tablespoons of butter and then about four tablespoons or so of milk. I'm just guessing here. And then I just like to add a little bit of salt and pepper and go ahead and smash it. Now my potato masher was being used by my daughter so I'm doing my chop and stir utensil, which worked just as good. All right, my potatoes are done. You can use beaters to make these even creamier, but I like them thick. All right, I hope you really like my Instant Pot meatloaf and mashed potatoes. Now don't worry, I have two printable recipes of these for you. One is the Instant Pot version, the other one is the oven versions. The fourth recipe I'm sharing with you is apple dump cake. It's so easy. I like to push start while we're eating dinner and dessert is all ready when dinner is done. So first I'm gonna start with a little pan that will fit right inside my Instant Pot. You can use a springform pan, you can use a glass bowl even if you wanted to. So then I'm gonna add a 20 ounce can of apple pie filling and you're gonna dump it just right into the bottom of your pan. 
after that you're going to spread it around the best you can. Then on top of that you're going to add two cups of yellow cake mix. You could also add white cake mix or even a spice cake mix would be delicious. Then just pat it all around. Now you don't want to soak it into the apple but you're going to press it down pretty even so when we put the butter on top it won't spread all in one corner. Okay so I have four tablespoons of butter here that I'm going to spread around the best that I can. You don't want to be mixing it in your cake mix. It will cook I promise. You're just going to spread it. So now I'm going to add one cup of water inside of my Instant Pot. And if you notice my little trivet thing, I don't want my bowl to sit right into the water. So it's going to sit right on top of that. And that is all you have to do. So now you're just going to take the lid, put it on, make sure that it's on ceiling and not venting. There we go, ceiling. And you're going to cook it on manual for 25 minutes. Once it's done, you're going to push it over to venting because we're going to do a quick release with this one. Then when it's all done releasing its pressure, you can take the lid off and it smells amazing. Once the steam kind of goes away, then you can pull it right out. Now I love to make this right as we're eating dinner and so it's all ready to go when dinner is done. I love to add a little bit of ice cream on top or you can add whatever you like to put on your apple dump cake, also known as apple cobbler. Now, if you're new to the Instant Pot and you need a little bit of help, I specifically put these two videos up there just for you. All right, guys, I'll see you next Monday. Bye.